Hey class, so today we're going to think about why do buildings fall down during earthquakes? We want to ask ourselves questions like, how would a one or two story building behave in an earthquake? How do the building's materials affect the way that it behaves during an earthquake? And how does the construction of the building itself affect its behavior during an earthquake and possibly make it fall or keep it standing up? So let's explore those questions today as we do our earthquake simulator. An earthquake is the shaking of the earth caused by pieces of the earth's upper crust called tectonic plates suddenly shifting. This shifting of tectonic plates causes the ground to shake in many directions. When that shaking occurs, structures can potentially get thrown from side to side and up and down. We know that Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest tends to stay at rest. In an earthquake, the buildings want to remain at rest. The problem is the tectonic plate that they're resting on is moving. Another factor that affects structures during an earthquake is what the structure is built on. The surface over a tectonic plate can be hard, like rock, or it can be soft, like soil. Before actual construction workers begin the process of making a building, there are many things to consider. Will the materials be strong, rigid, well-enforced, or flexible, thereby able to absorb movement without deforming? Construction workers also want to find out if a construction site is near a fault. Now, a fault is a fracture or zone of fractures between two blocks of rock. During an earthquake, the rock on one side of the fault suddenly slips with respect to the other. If a building is on top of that fault or even near it, it could get very damaged during an earthquake. To avoid faults, construction workers use hazard maps. A hazard map is a map that highlights areas that are affected by or are vulnerable to a particular hazard. They're often created for things like natural hazards like earthquakes or volcanoes or landslides or flooding and tsunamis. Hazard maps help prevent serious damage and death. Often hazard maps like this one will be used. You can see the green outer portions of the map. Those are farthest away from the fault line, which is located at the center of the map. And then as you close in on that fault line, those areas start suddenly or gradually change colors from yellow to red, indicating an increasingly greater risk of experiencing hazards such as earthquakes. When we get to our activity, you're going to investigate how a house can collapse during an earthquake, and then you're going to learn from that collapse to build one that's indestructible in an earthquake. So let's prepare for that. The first step is to understand how and why a structure collapses during an earthquake. How might a house frame behave in an earthquake? And what is the best way to make it earthquake resistant? Earthquakes are usually measured using a seismograph, which is an instrument that measures and records details of earthquakes, such as force and duration. But this activity is more concerned with how structures are affected by shaking caused by an earthquake. You will use meters per second squared to determine the acceleration of the structure. Fortunately, Google Science Journal app makes this easy by utilizing the accelerometer built into many modern cell phone and tablet devices. All right, you're gonna build two things today. One, an earthquake simulator, and two, a structure to put on top of that earthquake, earthquake simulator. Let's begin with the earthquake simulator. Here's what you need. Two pieces of cardboard, about equal size, two rubber bands, and four marbles that are all about the same size. You're gonna take your two pieces of cardboard, put one on top of the other, and then you're gonna stretch a rubber band onto them like that. And then you'll do the same thing with your second rubber band on the other side. <clears throat> okay. So you have your two rubber banded together. Then you're going to take your four marbles and you're going to put them inside about here and here. So let's do that now.
All right, cool. There you go. That's all there is to it for your earthquake simulator. Now you're going to build a structure to put on top of it so that when the earthquake happens, you'll see what happens to your structure. You can build it out of anything. I'm going to use toilet paper tubes and a little bit of cardboard for mine. You could use paper, you could use Legos, you could use, I don't know, anything that you have at home is perfectly fine as long as it fits on top of your earthquake simulator. You can see I have designed a very simple structure here. I have three columns of two paper, uh, toilet paper rolls and I just tape them together here and then I tape them to the roof as well, which is just a piece of flat cardboard, almost like you would get from a cereal box. So my structure fits on top of my earthquake simulator. I'm now going to tape it down to my earthquake simulator. There you go, we're taped down. Okay, if you are going to get the Google Science Journal app, go ahead and download it to your phone, then press get started. You don't have to sign in, you can continue without signing in. All right, and then you'll get to this page here, press the plus button, and then go for the second icon here, and that is your accelerometer, and this is what you'll need for today's activity. If you don't feel comfortable getting this app or using your phone, you don't have to. It's not as dangerous as the one we did the other day. Your phone should remain intact and it shouldn't be damaged. But I understand if you don't want to do this. All right, the next thing you want to do is tape your phone to your uh, earthquake simulator here. And make sure you use tape that's not going to affect your phone. This isn't too sticky, this masking tape here. So I'll be able to peel it off. My phone will be fine. But basically, you want to have it open to the accelerometer there. And when you do your earthquake simulation, this part here that measures your meters per second squared, you're gonna try to get that up to six meters per second squared, and then you're gonna try to sustain that. Quakes. Now most earthquakes last 30 seconds. So you're gonna try to shake your earthquake simulator for 30 seconds at that sustained speed of six meters per second squared. So let's do that now, and let's see what happens to our structure. If you don't have the Science Journal app, just shake it as hard as you can, I guess, for 30 seconds and see if your building can stay up. So I grab the top one here and I just shake it around and I look at this and try to make it get up to six. It's very blurry, so don't get sick watching this, but I'm gonna try to get it up to six and keep shaking it at that speed for 30 seconds. You gotta shake it pretty hard to get to six. You just had an earthquake. Now evaluate what happened to your structure. Look at whatever happened to it. Here's what happened to mine. One of the columns fell off. Some of the tape came undone. Think about what happened to your structure and try to be creative and think of ways that you can improve it so that it will now be earthquake proof. And you can take as many trials as you need to find an earthquake proof structure. Um, I encourage you to stick with the materials you already used, but if you have an idea for materials that will make it better, go ahead and do that too. For me, I think that I can like firm up the connections here on my toilet paper rolls. I think that I can connect it better up here to my roof. And then what I could do is maybe think about the way that I tape it to the earthquake simulator. This would be like the way that the building is attached to the ground, right? And try to think about a way to make that more secure. I want you to do exactly the same and keep doing it until you have an earthquake proof structure that's not going to fall down even when you do the 30 second earthquake at six meters per second acceleration. When you finally have it, take a picture of it or a video to prove that it actually works during your earthquake. Okay, your challenge has been set. Make an earthquake proof building and show us, prove it to us with your earthquake simulator. All right, looking forward to seeing what you can do.